Hey guys, it's Adrian over BHA here bringing you an updated video. Now I mentioned this one in my uh, October status update video. Of course, I'm obviously running behind already because we're uh, already starting November. Uh, but this is uh, a video on iOS push notifications in Home Assistant. I'm pretty sure I did this video a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. So it's uh, it's been a while. I thought it was time to do an updated version. Uh, let's uh, see how this goes. All right, so uh, for the most part, there's a couple of different kinds of push notifications that you can use or utilize with Home Assistant. So there's uh, basic notifications, which are basically just your message that'll pop up on your phone and uh, give you an alert or a notification of some sort. Your other option is what they call an actionable notification. Now what this will do, whenever it pops up on your phone and you hold it down for the uh, full message to pop up, it'll have actionable buttons uh, that you can use to uh, do things in Home Assistant. So if you leave your lights on, you can push a button and uh, turn the lights off. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. And we're gonna cover all that in this video today. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're gonna cover. So for starters, uh, we're just gonna go over the uh, what we need to get the iOS push notifications to work on our phone, to work with Home Assistant. Uh, once we do that, then we're gonna create a, uh, a test script that we can use just to test the basic uh, notification. And then of course, we'll kind of see what that looks like in action. Once we do that, then we'll uh, do some actionable notification test scripts. There's a little bit more involved with the actionable notification because we'll need some automations and whatnot. So we'll uh, do a little bit more configuration on that side. But once we do that, then of course we'll see what that looks like in action. So let's get started. All right, so for your basic iOS, uh, you know, configuration for this to work properly is not a whole lot you need to do, especially if you're using uh, Discovery and Home Assistant. Uh, it should pull in the information for you all together. You won't have to really do anything. In fact, once it sees your device and pulls it in, it will create a uh, .ios.conf uh, file, which is the config file. As you can see here, this is kind of what it looks like, or at least an example of what it looks like, how it's pulled in my... Uh, my phone here just to kind of give you uh, give you an idea also if you go into uh, integrations on the uh, web interface here you will see an entry for home assistant iOS and this is the device that it has pulled in and so as you can see here it's monitoring the battery state and battery level of my phone as well so we know that it is at least communicating with our iOS device once all that's in there, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so for the basic notification, we're just going to uh, create a little test script here that will send a message to our phone just to kind of see what that looks like. Obviously, you don't have to do scripts. You can do this with automations uh, and whatnot for alerts, but this is just to kind of give you an example. So I'm gonna edit my test scripts.yaml file here find me an open spot down here at the bottom uh, for this one I'm gonna call it test underscore notification uh, for the alias we'll go ahead and call it test notification as well again you can call yours whatever you want uh, let's see sequence uh, for the service we're gonna do notify dot iOS underscore Adrian's underscore iPhone now this is the name of my notify component that it automatically created whenever uh, we set up the iOS component. All right, so data. For the title, we're just gonna say test notification. Message, we're gonna say this is a test. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a custom badge number. So under message, we'll say data again, and then push. 
and then badge and I'm going to set the badge number to 25 really just to kind of show you that you can if you want to assign certain badge numbers to certain types of alerts um, you can certainly do that once we have all that in there we'll go ahead and save it and we're just going to do a check config over here in the web interface just to make sure everything looks good and then of course we'll do a reload scripts Now we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so uh, let's see this thing in action. On the left side here, I have a card in Home Assistant that has my test notification script there at the top. On the right, of course, there is my iOS device that I'll be sending the notification to. Go ahead and hit execute here. And boom, as you can see there, it popped up on my phone. It says Home Assistant, Test Notification was the title. And then, of course, this is a test. And, of course, you can push on that. It's not really going to show much more than was already there because it's just a basic notification. But, you know, looks good. And you get the idea of what we're trying to do here. And just to also show you the badge number, we're going to go into my Home Assistant app there in the middle. As you can see, it changed the... Uh, badge number 225 which is the one that we set up for that particular notification pretty cool feature i like it all right let's go ahead and move on to the next step and set up some actionable notifications all right so for actionable notifications there's a little bit more that we have to do in order for it to work. As you can see here, here's kind of an overview of what uh, is required for this to work properly. I pulled this from the uh, Home Assistant uh, component page for uh, actionable notifications. But we're gonna walk through everything just so that uh, you know you can set this up on your own. So of course, for starters, we're gonna edit our uh, configuration.yaml file. We need to add in a iOS component here if we weren't using actionable notifications, uh, we would never have to add this iOS component because it was automatically pulled in from Discovery. But since we are going to do actionable notifications and we have to create some additional things, we actually have to define this in our configuration. So uh, iOS is the component, and then of course push, and then we're going to add in a category. So we'll say categories. And then for this example, we're going to say uh, this category, I'm going to do something with my kitchen lights. So we'll say name is kitchen lights. Uh, for the identifier, again, I'm just going to say kitchen lights, all one word. Under actions, we have to define identifier again. Now, this is the identifier for the actions. We want this one to be in all caps. So as you can see here, there's two identifiers, one for the category and one for the action. The identifier in actions needs to be in all caps. We'll go ahead and give this a title. I'm gonna say turn lights off. For the activation mode, we're just gonna say background. I'm not going to require authentication, so authentication required is going to be no. And then, of course, we're going to set destructive to yes. Um, and then lastly, the behavior we will set to default. Once we have all that in there, we're going to go ahead and save it. Now we need to uh, go ahead and set up an automation. Now this automation is going to be what will happen when the button is pushed. So we're going to have a turn off lights button as part of the uh, push notification. And when that pops up and we push that button, then of course this automation will tell it what to do. So I've opened up my automations.yaml file here. We're going to find an open spot down at the bottom. Uh, for the ID, I'm just going to say push underscore notify underscore action. Uh, for the alias, again, I'm just going to say push notify action. Set the initial state to be on. 
or for the trigger platform, it's going to be event. The event type will be iOS.notification underscore action underscore fired. Now for event data, the action name is going to be lights off. Remember that was all caps. That was the identifier that we used earlier. So make sure you have it all caps. All right. Now for our automation action. The service will be home assistant dot turn off. And for of course the entity ID is going to be my kitchen lights because that's what we're working with here. Light dot kitchen underscore lights. Once we have all that in there, go ahead and save it. All right, so we have our iOS uh, configuration set up in our configuration.yaml file. We have an automation set up to control what the button is going to do in the notification. Now we just need to set up some sort of test script that we can use to send this uh, notification to us in the first place. Now, normally you would do this with some sort of automation where you're monitoring your uh, lights being left on and you want to be notified so that you can turn them off. But for this example, we're just going to create another test script that will send this uh, notification to us. So I'm going to edit my uh, test scripts.yaml file again. We're going to jump down to the bottom and create another one. We're going to call this test underscore actionable underscore notification. Uh, for the alias, again, just call it, you know, test actionable notification. For the service, again, it's going to be notify.ios underscore adrian's underscore iPhone. Yours will be different depending on what the name of your uh, iOS device is and Home Assistant. For the message, we're going to say kitchen lights are still on. Uh, let's see, for data, push. I'm going to set the badge number to be 26. And then, of course, we need to specify that category. So it's going to be kitchen lights because that's what we set up for our category identifier. Action data. Uh, of course, the entity ID will be light.kitchen underscore lights. Once we have all that in there, go ahead and save it. And then, of course, we're going to jump over to uh, Home Assistant's web interface here. We're going to go in and check our configuration again. And then, of course, we'll restart Home Assistant for our changes to take effect. Give that a second to come back up. Once that comes back up, one last thing we need to do is on our iOS device, we need to go into the uh, settings uh, of the Home Assistant app. And we're going to scroll down to the section that talks about um, notification settings. And then we want to say update push settings. That way it'll pull down the latest from the Home Assistant server to our phone. Once you've done all that, then we're ready to move on to the last step. Same setup as we did before. On the left side, we have the card that has our uh, test actionable notification script. And I also added uh, the switch for the kitchen lights down there as well, just so we can see them go on and off. On the right side is my iOS device that we're sending the notification to. So we'll go ahead and hit the execute button on that script. And then as you can see here, we have an alert on my phone that popped up. Kitchen lights are still on. If we hold that down, we have a button there to turn the lights off. We click on that, and then, of course, as you can see, my kitchen lights went off. Simple as that. So this is a pretty awesome setup. I mean, if you uh, set up some sort of uh, 
automation that's going to monitor whether you leave your lights on and nobody's at home then of course it'll send you a notification and you can turn off those lights or uh, you know I'm sure there's thousands of other options and things that you could do with it this is just an example for you guys to play around with I think it's pretty cool definitely worth checking out it's uh, always nice to have the iOS notifications set up uh, I think they work really well with home assistant so let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video so for starters of course we just went over the basic iOS configuration for Home Assistant, just getting your device uh, communicating properly with Home Assistant and everything. Once we did that, we uh, created a basic notification test script. Basically, just set it up to send us a message uh, to our iOS device. Uh, the next step after that, of course, was uh, we showed you what that looked like in action. Uh, once we did that, then of course we went back and went through the whole setup for an actionable notification. Um, a little bit more involved with that one than the, just the regular notification, but we set that all up as well. And then of course lastly I showed you what that looked like in action. That's the end of the video guys. Uh, it's a little bit lengthy video just because there's a lot to it uh, in setting up the actionable notifications. But as you can see, once you get it going, it goes pretty smooth. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I will see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.